Lord, your goodness never runs out on us, Father. You're never done with where, where you want us to be, Father. We have our own agenda. We have our own mindset. We have our own things that we, we expect you to do. But, Father, I thank you that you are good. Lord, that your promises, they are yes and they are amen. Father, I thank you that as we remember, this is when your son came in. Lord, this is when your son came in just shortly to be crucified. Lord, and they laid down the palms in front of him, Lord. And he rode in on a donkey, Lord. And out of the abundance of their heart, knowing that you are the Messiah, the Savior of all, they worshiped and they praised. And everything that had happened before, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the salvation. Lord, when you read in the temple from Isaiah 61 and you declared that this is the year of the sovereign Lord, Lord, that you had come to set those free who had been oppressed, those who had been bound. And they took you to the edge of the city and they tried to push you off, but it says that because you were savage, you walked right through. Lord, that's, that's the Jesus that was represented on the Friday. As you walked in and the palms came and they laid them down, that was the Jesus that we serve. We didn't serve a mammy, pammy Jesus that looks pretty on Christmas Day. We served a Savior. We serve a Savior that would lay down his life. Just a few days on, would lay down his life. He would take the death of sin. He would bear the sins of the world, not of just the good, not of just the ones that, that have done what they think they're supposed to do, but, but Jesus, you took the sin for all of us. And so we just want to take a moment, just right now as we go back into this, Kirk, and we, we sing about the faithfulness of God. We just want to take a moment and we want to remember that even though we are not faithful, that you are faithful. Even though we are not faithful, you are faithful and you are a good, 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 good father. So Lord, let's just, we just want to take a minute, just take a minute or two, Kirk, one more time, and let's just tell him how faithful he is. Let it go. Let go of faith. so glad and honored to be here with you this morning. Uh, it has been a while. Uh, last time I preached, 
uh, was in December, and uh, it, was, it was a good time. Uh, the next couple of weeks were not as good uh, as I had uh, contracted the virus uh, that is known as COVID. Uh, but God was still faithful, amen? I said God was still faithful, amen? Man, we're going to have to get rowdy, rowdy, batty, batty, all right? Because this is how it works with me, all right? You can ask anybody. I might be a little loud, all right? And I'm not going to apologize for that uh, because sometimes you got to be loud, right? I mean, how many of us know that one kid? I'm the youngest of five kids, right? I was born loud, right? I came into a household of four other kids or three other kids at the time that were really well behaved. Somebody had to change it up, you know? <laughs> I mean, I was more than an afterthought. I was a, oh, why? You know, like, you know, some parents say you were an accident. I was a why. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, why, Lord? Why? You know, but my parents, the Lord's been faithful. Uh, <laughs> I'm here today, and uh, I'm honored to be here today. So uh, we have a pastor. I just want you to know we have a pastor that has a genuine heart. I mean, I said we have a pastor who has a genuine heart. Like, like he genuinely loves you. Okay? Now, today, as I preach, you may not think he loves you because I'm preaching, not him, right? But I promise, he, he genuinely, he does love you guys. But, but I'm, I'm honored. You know, I think uh, sometimes we can forget how much of an honor it is, first of all, to serve God. I mean, it's an honor. Like, he chose us. Like, I want you to think about that. He, he chose you. Like, that's lit. You know, sorry. I mean, that's really cool, guys. I mean... It's awesome. Like, he chose us. And if that don't make you feel like you matter, then you just need to tell the devil to shut up. I mean, because you are relevant in the kingdom of God. I was reminded this morning and, and told this in there. I'm going to preach here in a minute. Uh, I was reminded earlier when I was doing the volunteer roundup of, you know, uh, a kid that probably woke up one day uh, and had some loaves and some fishes. And he went down to listen to this guy Jesus preach. Right? And as he's down there and he's listening, I mean, you're talking just an irrelevant kid who that day had some lunch that his mama probably put together and went down to listen. But Jesus used what man would say irrelevant, which is just a sack lunch to feed 5,000 people. Amen? And if he could do that with a sack lunch, how much more can he do with you? How much more can he do with you? Listen, if God could take some loaves and fishes, or in my case, because I love me some bologna with some Miracle Whip, he could take some bologna, some Miracle Whip, and some baked sour cream cheddar lays, somebody preach, and use that to feed some folk, what can he do with your heart? What can he do with your heart? Let me tell you what he can do. He can change the world. He can change the world. Wouldn't you like to have been Billy Graham's Sunday school teacher? You know what I mean? I would love, I want, like, I'd love to be Billy Graham's Sunday school teacher. You know, because I tell you. I'd be like, just so you know, Billy Graham, that, I, I taught him John 3.16. And uh, he's kind of gone on. He's kind of a big deal. Um, so that was me. You know, I would do that, right? That's probably why God has never given me a Billy Graham in my life. Uh, because I'm sure that his Sunday school teacher was sweet. Um, not like me. So Pastor Adam has been on this series called Savage Christian. I mean, savage. Did I die? Did I go? Oh, I'm back. I'm back. What's up, Kurt? Don't be, you can give me like a heads up. You know what I mean? Uh, all of a sudden, I'm like talking and nobody, anyways. It was sad. I was talking about something. Oh, savage Christians. So, savage Christians, man. When I think of the term of savage Christians, I'm reminded of like the Jungle Book. Am I the only one? Like, it was like the only Disney movie I was allowed to watch as a child because my parents were the ones that, you know, believed that there were ghosts and goblins like in the, in the monkeys. So it was kind of creepy, but yeah, I watched the Jungle Book, and that, that little boy, he's savage. You know, he, that boy has some problems, you know what I mean? But he was raised on his own accord. He was raised by animals, right? But to be a savage Christian is to really give yourself up. Like he did in the Jungle Book, he gave himself up. Why? Because he didn't know no better. We have to sometimes, to be savage Christians, forget the things that we've been taught. We have to really do that. We have to quit limiting ourselves to what somebody said about us or what our Sunday school teacher told us. And we have to do this crazy thing. And I know this sounds ridiculous. We have to get in the word of God ourselves and find out what it says about us. I mean, there's a pastor. I love him so much, man. He hurts me. He steps on my toes. And one of the greatest comments he has is when you wake up in the morning, you need to get scriptural before you get social. Listen, before we pull up, and let me just tell you what happened while you were asleep. Nothing entertaining. 
You know what I mean? Somebody took a selfie, you know, took one of those pictures. Somebody posted a picture from three days before that they forgot to post, but the kids said, how come no one's told me how cute I am? That's what you miss. It's gonna be okay. But let me tell you something. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Fox News, CNN, it's never gonna change your life. The Word of God is what's gonna change your life. And to be a savage Christian, you gotta get in the Word of God. Because I love Pastor Adam, right? But he's just a man. The Word of God is the truth. You want to know the dictionary version of how savage we are supposed to be? It's found in the Bible. It's not found on Sunday mornings listening to me or Pastor Adam or, or Joe preach. It's found in the Word of God. And a three-minute clip on Instagram is not going to get your relationship with Jesus any better. I love those pastors. I love those encouraging words. Man, that's awesome. But if that's the only gospel and the only truth that you're getting in that day, you are not living a savage Christian life. Listen, if you're relying on a man in a three-minute clip to determine your faith and your belief in God, you are selling God short. You are selling him short because the revelation that you find in the Bible in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it tells you that our Savior, he was so savage that he didn't sin one time. He never did anything wrong, but he still put himself on the cross. He still was in the garden weeping to his father. But at the end of the day, he knew what God had called him to do. Why? Because in Luke chapter 4, it says that he was reading from the scroll of Isaiah 61 in the Bible. And it told of who Christ was. This is the year of the sovereign Lord, for he has declared and he has sent me to preach the good news. Woo! Savagery. I mean, that's some savagery. And then the best part, he rolls up the script, sets it down, and he says, I am which it says I am. Ooh, ooh, he getting, he getting, he getting like dirty and turkey, you know what I mean? Like, Ugh. you know, what you gonna do? You know, and then what did it do? It made him mad. Warning, if you gonna be savage, there gonna be some people that get mad. You know what I mean? Uh, good for them. You know, I make people mad and don't mean to. It'd be great to actually make someone mad and mean to do it. You know what I mean? Uh, what is that like? Uh, Pastor Adam? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so he's been talking about that. But as, as I was researching some savagery and some savage Christians in the Bible, I was brought to three people that really st stood out to me. You have Paul, right? His name used to be Saul. You have Paul, right? Went around murdering Christians. Wrote seven to 12 books in the New Testament. Beheaded in Rome. You have Peter, right-hand man of Jesus. You know what I mean? The dude on the boat that Pastor Adam was talking about last week, right? Awesome man. But you know what? He was crucified upside down because he wasn't, didn't feel and wasn't worthy enough to be crucified like his Savior, Jesus, his friend. Then you have Stephen. Stephen was stoned to death for preaching the gospel. Stoned to death for preaching the gospel. And while he was being stoned, remember the savagery I talked about in Paul? His name was Saul at the time, and it says he held the cloaks, held the garments of the men who stoned Stephen. And you're telling me that God hasn't called you to some savagery? Hasn't called you to do something? Listen, the title of today's sermon is ACT. A-C-T. Three simple letters. Three little letters. But let me tell you what the definition is. It's to take action. It's to do something. I want to tell each and every one of you, he has called you to act. He has called you to action. He has called you to do something. And if you're not doing something for him, you might as well not be doing anything at all. It's the truth. Because the purpose that God has placed you on this earth for, we only have this much time to fulfill that purpose. But what we do in this much time right here affects eternity forever. And if we're living in just the moment, and we're living for just ourselves. We are selling God. We are selling Jesus short. Because what you do right here can change a generation. Listen, how many of us that are parents would say in here, we want our children and our children's children and our children's 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 children to know Jesus? Right? We want that. That's a desire. So what are you doing right here to impact here. 
What are you doing? It's a reality. And listen, I'm not perfect. Like, I'm not the guy over here like, I'm perfect. You have no idea. No. Like, I got some savagery on the other side, too. You know what I mean? I'm trying to flip it for some savagery to be like Christ, to be a Christian. Right? But in that, the, the act, what does it mean? The first thing that act means is appeal. Write that down. Appeal. A-P-P-A-L. Appeal. And I'm going to read a scripture for you right here in Acts chapter 2, verse 36. It says, or uh, starting in 36 through 31, it says, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter, remember the savagery? Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Verse 38. And Peter said to them, well, he made an appeal. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39. For the promise is for you. And remember what we said earlier, your children, and for your children, and for all who are far off, every one whom the Lord God calls to himself. In verse 40, it says, and with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Verse 41, so those who received his words were baptized, and they were added 3,000 souls. The savagery to make an appeal. Dear brothers and dear sisters, I make an appeal to you today that it says in Romans, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. The first thing that we have to do is we have to act. We have to appeal. We have to make a request. We have to tell of the goodness of God. The best way to tell of the goodness of God is the evidence of God in your life. Remember Billy Graham we were talking about? Somebody said to Billy Graham one time, how can you preach and how can you believe in this Jesus? Have you never seen him? You've never touched him. You don't know who he is. And he said, I've never seen and I've never touched the wind, but I see the effects of the wind. I see the trees blow. I see the grass move. That's what Jesus is in my life. I can't see him, but I see the effect first of Jesus in my life. Second of Jesus in yours. But we have to make an appeal. Listen, I'm appealing to you today. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is your day. I appeal to you. Please, know him. Because a day with Jesus is better than a million without him. One day with Christ will change your life forever. Listen, life isn't always a box of roses and chocolates to make you feel warm and fuzzy and gooey on the inside. Every day is not Valentine's Day. But Valentine's Day is a whole lot better when you have Jesus in it. Valentine's Day is a whole lot better when your life is right with him. And it's simple. I make an appeal to you today. Stop the sin. And the sin in your life, it leads to death. Period. That's what you earn for. But I'm here to tell you that the goodness of God is that through Christ, you can be saved. Amen? Through Christ, you can be saved. So the first thing is to act. Well, what did Peter do here in the scripture that we just read? The first thing he did is he appealed to them and he shared the gospel, the good news of who Jesus Christ was. The second thing he did is he was honest. Then he spoke the truth. And then he led them to Jesus. That's what we need to do to appeal to people. It's not about the lights and the music and all that. Listen, the message of Jesus Christ needs no apology. The message of Christ needs no really good worship music and some lights. The message of Christ stands alone on itself. It stands alone on itself. A dude without sin died for you. He died for that's savage. I love you. I'm not dying for a single one of you. It's not happening. You'll know, because if something breaks out, that loud scream you hear, that's me. The dust you see flying behind my feet, you'll be shocked, but I promise it'll be there. 
Because for a big old boy, I will move. Move out the way. You know, I will get out. But Christ, knowing all things, went through the pain of the cross. So I appeal to you today. I appeal to you today. Know Christ. The second thing to see is to care. The first is to appeal. The second thing is to care. In sales, we have a comment or a statement that we say. We say that nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. That's the number one thing that you can learn if you're selling something. Care. You have to have genuine care. If you turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22 through 25, starting in verse 22, it says, You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. Now here comes the why, verse 23. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal, living word of God. For as the scriptures say, remember we said about going to the word for the scriptures say, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flowers fade. Verse 25, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And that word is the good news or the gospel that was preached to you. This is again Peter telling you to show sincere love. Not a fake love, but a sincere love. How good does it feel when you know that you are sincerely loved? I mean, come on. Listen, my wife, she loves me well. I am so blessed and I am so honored to have Amanda in my life. She loves me well. She loved me when I was stinky. Still, sometimes she loves me. She loved me when I was caught up in a gambling addiction. She loved me when I was popping pills like they were Tic Tacs. She still loved me. And it was a sincere love. It was a sincere love. Why? Why, why? Because it says right here, because she was born again. See, she was a new creation. Our inherent nature, or who we are created, we are created and born into a sinful nature. The only thing good is God. We, we, we are bad. It's truthful. Right? But we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That is what changes things. That is what transforms things us. It's through the one and simple message that Jesus Christ is the only way. And when you have Christ, trust me, it is easier to love. I mean, I'm lovable, cuttable, oh so cutable, right? So I'm easy to love just naturally. I get it. Y'all don't have to tell me, right? I understand. It's cool. Uh, and Amanda gets my cuddles. <laughs> uh, so she's so lucky. Uh, Y'all remind her of that when you see her. Say, I hear JB's a good cuddler. Uh, that'll make her slap you, but do it. It'll be fun. Um, and I understand that, right? But she so sincerely loves me. But as much as my spouse loves me, as much as my parents love me, God loves me more. With a sincere love. A love that is so sincere that he put his son on the cross. His son bore the sins of this world. He was not a sinner, but he took on a sinner's death. He was beaten. He was bruised. He bled. He was hung on a cross. He was savage. It wasn't a pretty picture that you see. It was brutal. And that brutality was for you and for me. But when he transforms your life, when he changes who you are, trust me, it is easier to show a sincere love. The song says, Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. Be careful. I remember I, I, the first 21 days of prayer that we had, that was a prayer that God put on my heart to say, Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. As I began to cry like a baby, as I started to sincerely feel the love of God in my life. I remember being at our first youth conference that we went to. We're in Lubbock, Texas. And I remember the first night that we're up there, this guy David Perkins is preaching, and he's giving a message to these youth, right? And he, and he does the altar call. And these kids run to the front, and they just immediately, without anyone telling them, they just kneel down, lay their face down before God. And I remember looking at that, 
And I remember weeping and sobbing. Why? Because my heart was broken for what broke his. It was a genuine care. A genuine, sincere love for what God was doing at that moment in young people's lives that will change their life forever. There is nothing greater than when you see somebody come to know Christ that you didn't think would ever come to know Christ. Trust me, a lot of people have given up on me. I, I was born without a chance. We all are. Right? Life circumstances don't determine where you're going to wind up. A relationship with Jesus Christ determines where you're going to wind up. Listen, what your mommy and your daddy and what your uncles and whatever, listen, those are bad things that have happened. I understand nobody's family is perfect, but that does not determine who Christ says you are. You are a son and you are a daughter of the Most High King. Listen, he wants to pluck you out of where you are. He wants to pull you out of that and so you can walk in the goodness of who he is. You're worth that. If no one's ever told you, I want to tell you this. You are not irrelevant. You matter to the kingdom of God. You matter to this church. You matter to this city. You matter to your family. Don't quit and don't give up. Get up. Stand up and make a change in your life. Why? Because it's worth it. I make that appeal to you. I care enough to tell you the truth, to be honest with you. People, we have got to change. Because it is not worth your soul for just a moment of good. Good fun that makes you feel good. Listen, there's a lot of us in here that have struggled with addiction in the past. There's a lot of us. I'm looking at the faces right now. There's some years of sobriety in here. There's some months of sobriety in here. Listen, there's some people in here that none of us know have an addiction. And maybe today is day one. Maybe right now at this moment is minute one. Minute one. But I want you to know I care enough about you to tell you to knock it off. Because I genuinely love you. But my love and the expression of my love to you is nothing like the love of our Heavenly Father. Nothing. But today is a day of new beginning and new creation. A day is the day that the Lord takes you from where you think you need to be, and he puts you where he wants you to be. He puts you where? Why? Because I'm making an appeal to you today. Why? Because I genuinely care. And then the last thing is, because God has transformed me, and God will transform you. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2, it says, I appeal, there's that word again, for you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. There are some of us in here, if we were honest, we are not holy and acceptable to God. Our bodies, we have not given it up to him. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Verse 2, do not be conformed to the world. Conformed. But be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, that by, by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Listen, that guy Paul wrote this letter to Romans. Wrote this letter to Rome. Remember the savagery? The guy that held the cloaks while Stephen was being stoned? Remember the guy that was beheaded in Rome? He wrote this part right here and right now, and he kind of covers Acts which is appeal, care, and transform. In these two verses, it is displayed. The first thing is, he appeals in verse 1. It says right here, I appeal to you. Also in verse 1, he starts the caring. Why? Because he's telling you about the mercies of God. And then the last verse, in verse 2, he says to be transformed. People, I'm here to tell you today that we have got to act. We have got to act. But before you can go out and tell somebody else about the goodness of God, we must first look at ourselves. Will we hear the appeal? Will we let somebody care for us? And will we be transformed by the renewing of our mind, by changing our mind? Listen, the mind that we have is only transformed through the word of God and the goodness of God. 
If you're allowing everything else in your mind, you're allowing your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions to control you, you're not in the Word of God. Enough. Because the Word of God has so many good things to say. We're a child of God. Listen, he's, he's the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And because of his son's sacrifice, we are grafted in to a lineage that goes to the creation of man. And there is nothing you can do. There is no works in this world that you can do to earn that favor of God in your life. The scriptures make it very clear. There is only one way. Says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me, except through Christ. No one. No one. Not Bill Gates, not Steve Jobs. No one. The amount of money you have in this world, the job that you have, the family that you look at, will not get you to heaven. Volunteering at the Salvation Army, volunteering at Connect Church of Babylon will not get you to God. The only way is through His Son, Christ Jesus, who laid down His life for you. For each and every one of you here. But you don't understand, J.B., you don't know where I've come from. I don't. But the Heavenly Father does. He knows where you've been. He knows where you were last night. He knows who you woke up beside this morning. It's real. Why? I'm going I'm to be real and I'm going to be honest. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Everybody in here, bow your heads and close your eyes. We've made the appeal to you. I've, I, I've showed you that he cares for you. But now, the moment to transform, to be changed. See, you have to make the decision between you and God that you will give up your desires and your life and you will live for him. And we want to help you through that process. We want to help you through that process. But the first step is you've got to know God. And once you know God, you've got to find freedom. And once you find freedom, you discover your purpose. Why are you here? Your why. And then the last thing is you get to go and make a difference. So with every head bowed and every eye closed in here, if you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, maybe this is the first time you've heard the message of the gospel. Or maybe you've heard it, but there's something. You feel the tug of Christ. You feel it on your heart that where you are is not where he wants you to be. You know, and as I was speaking, the sin in your life was being replayed in your mind. And you're like, how am I ever going to get through this? Simply through Christ. That's it. Or maybe you're sitting there and, and you're in a very dangerous place because you have heard the good news of the gospel. You have even said you would accept the good news of the gospel, but you have returned to the things that are of this world. And you've gone back for its comfort. And if you are one of those two, I simply appeal to you right now. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Now, everybody look at me. There are some guys in the back and some gals that have some green books in their hand. And these green books are a way for us to help you get through the next step. See, everything we do has a next step. The first part is we know God and we find freedom. We discover our purpose and we go and make a difference. Well, this book is just a way... For that first step, that next step, the next step is to know Christ like you've never known him before. To commit your life to him and to give up who you are for who he wants you to be. And that only comes through Christ Jesus. So in the back, when service is over, if you want to go back there, you need some prayer, you need someone to pray with you, they're back there and they've got some books that we want to give you as a gift. I'm going to tell you guys that Jesus loves you. We love you too. I'm so proud of each and every one of you and look forward to watching God continue to work in your life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen. This on? This on? Check, check, check. Amen. Can y'all hear me? This is on? There we go. There we go. 
Hey, uh, what a great message. Amen. What a great message. You know, the part about, you know, we need to see God in our life. You know, you see the effects of the wind, but what are the effects of God in your life? Amen. What do you see? What, what do other people see? Do other people see effects of God in your life? Wow. That's amazing. So, guys, I just want to, um, man, that's, I tell you what. God is so good. And everything that Pastor JB preached today, man, we need to take it to heart. Because there's generations out there, there's people out there that need to know. Amen? That we need to act for. We need to make the appeal for them. We need to care for them. We need to help them get transformed because, like he said, there's only there's only one way to heaven. Amen? And that's through Jesus. Amen. Well, hey, I've got just a couple of announcements for you before we get out of here. And uh, in case you guys didn't know or haven't heard, Easter is next weekend. <laughs> Come on. So next weekend, kind of a big deal for the church, you know, for the big C, you know, if you're a Christian, kind of a big deal, kind of the whole reason, you know, that that's, we're here and we're doing what we do um, is for Easter, you know, Resurrection Sunday. And uh, so we are, we're going to have kind of after service, we're going to have a festival uh, for the kids, uh, be able to bless them with some candy and some things. And so... You know, we're still in need of, of candy and some eggs, so um, if you would like to during this week, um, if you feel that you want to give uh, some candy or some eggs, just drop them off at our office at 910 South Treadway, and uh, that would be a blessing. Also, um, Tuesday nights has become a really powerful night for this church, and Tuesday night is our prayer night. Tuesday night is the time that we come together, and it's staff-led meaning that, you know, this, each week a different staff member comes in and leads prayer. And they share with what God has put on their heart. And it's become a really, really powerful time uh, for this church. And so I'm just asking for you guys for 40 minutes on Tuesday nights to come and help us pray for this service, help us pray for this community, help us pray for each other. So if you have time, Tuesday nights, it starts at 6.30. We start right at 6.30, and we're going to go to 7.10. So 40 minutes is all we're asking. So if you can make it on Tuesday nights, we would absolutely love to have you. And then another thing that we have going during the week is we have our small groups. And, you know, that is something around here that we say don't do life alone. And so if you are not part of a small group, go to our website. You click on small groups on the website, and it gives you a list of them. And there are some amazing things going on in the small groups. Like, I ask our small groups leader almost every week, what's, you know, give us a win. And, man, I tell you what, they just light it up because of things that are happening. So if you, you need community in your life, amen? Try that again. <laughs> you need community in your life, amen? Amen. You need somebody during the week that you can lean on. You need somebody during the week that you can say, hey, I'm having problems. I'm struck. Oh, y'all don't talk to anybody about it, huh? And it lies the problem, right? Come on. Because the Bible says that if we confess our faults one to another, it says it in James, we confess our faults one to another, that we can receive healing through that. See, a lot of us need healing, but we don't want to go through the process. But there's a process God has laid, and he's put you with people that love you. And our small group leaders love you and are there for you. So find a small group. One other thing I want to talk about before we uh, take up our offering this morning. If you do need a, an offering envelope, just raise your hand. Our, uh, our ushers will get you an offering envelope uh, this morning. But while they're doing that, just go ahead and raise your hand. Um, I want to talk to you about on Friday morning at 7 a.m., we're going to have a sunrise service. Um, on Good Friday at the YMCA. Uh, Kirk is going to do the music. Um, they've asked me to come and speak. And uh, we're just going to come together on Good Friday, the day that, uh, you know, our Savior was put on the cross. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do some worship. We're going to have the word. Amen. And uh, so I just encourage you, 
to come to that. Uh, we'll have some invites that you can put on Facebook that you can uh, put out there and let everybody know about it. So um, I just encourage you on, on Friday morning, 7 a.m. to be there. It's going to be a good time. So changing gears just real quick, we're going to take up our offering. So you guys stand up with me this morning. Come on, we've all got to sit down, get to get a little stretch on, right? Come on. So we're going to take up offering this morning, and we have several ways that you can give. Uh, you can go to our Venmo at Connect Church of Abilene. You can give that way. Uh, you can go to our website, uh, connectchurchofabilene.com, and you can give through that. Go to the far right, and there's a give button, or you can simply drop it in the bucket today. We don't pass the buckets. Our ushers will be in the back as you as you leave. They'll be back there that you can just drop your offering in if that's how you want to give. But just know that you're not giving to a church. You're giving through a church. Like we have several things that we support from this church. We have several people that count on us to support. And so I just want to say thank you for everybody that gives. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for supporting this church. And, and, and just know that, that what we're doing, we're making a difference. Come on, what we're doing, we're making a difference. And that's what I want to be a part of. Be a part of something bigger than yourself. Amen. We can't do everything, but we can do something. Amen. So before we get out of here this morning, we have an offering confession that we're going to say. And uh, you guys say this with me this morning. As I give my tithes and offerings, I confess God is first in my life. I give with a cheerful heart because I love God. In 2021, I am healed, whole, healthy, blessed, and prosperous in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all come on. Hey, we love you guys. Uh, ushers are in the back if you have offering to give. Hey, guys, we love you. Just want to tell you, I didn't get to preach this morning and tell you that, but I love you from, from my heart to yours, and uh, we're here for you. Amen? You guys have a blessed week, and we will see you, hopefully, either not Good Friday, but especially next week.